Hi guys, uh, this is Elias, and I am sharing some notes from an interview that I took uh, with some people when I went up to Paradise, California. But what I wanted to show first is that um, I went to Wonderground to check the temperatures and wind speeds and all of that for Paradise, and I was not able to find a lot of information because as you can see, <clears throat> when I get to the tabs that I want to get, it changes the city from paradise and it defaults to another city and I keep trying to change it back and it just won't give me the data so a little frustrating but it makes me wonder if they're scrubbing data um, or if they have already and I know I'm on the late freight on this um, but uh, anyway aside from that I want to talk about some of my notes uh, and you're gonna see video that I took as I drove up to Paradise, up on Pence Road, I couldn't turn into Paradise at all. So I just went up the road, went to a, uh, a location and kind of walked around just to get a kind of close up video. And also talked to uh, some people at an emergency re relief center. So here are my notes from that. These, uh, unfortunately, they didn't want to be interviewed. Uh, not videotaped, I should say. So here is uh, what I could get from my notes that they allowed me to take. Uh, they did tell me their names. Their names are Mike and Laura. Uh, I interviewed them on Saturday, uh, December 15th, 2018. And uh, so basically I, was, I walked in to the relief center and I asked who was heading up the relief just so I could talk to them and get information on what they're doing for the public. They told me the name was Mike Gibbons from California Emergency Relief, but he was at another location. So uh, a gentleman named Mike, who's an ex-cop, uh, was willing to talk. Didn't want to be videotaped or audiotaped, but he was willing to talk. So I asked him about observations. What was happening before the fires, a few, a few hours before, maybe a day before. So uh, they said that they, he woke up about 6.45 to the scanners on November 8th, and uh, he was hearing the broadcast of fire. Uh, he said he looked outside and saw a plume, and uh, by 9.30, they had walked, evacuated. They used a Skyway Road to get to Calusa, uh, if I remember right. Yeah, they used uh, Skyway Road, which I understand is the main artery. Um, and that <clears throat> goes in the direction of Chico, excuse me. Um, they shared his wife was there and her, um, she worked at this church where the emergency relief was set up. Her name was Laura. And she said that uh, PG&E turned off power all the way up towards Colfax. And this was due to high winds. They had a high wind advisory. It was red for two days before the fire. Um, uh, about the conditions, they said that the conditions were normal but dry. The winds kicked up 40 to 80 miles an hour just before, and then he saw the plume. Um, and, I, and I'm not discounting Mike at all. His experience is his experience. Uh, but it sounds normal to dry and winds kicking up 40 to 80 miles an hour. It's like, okay, which one is it? You know, he was an ex-cop. So I'm wondering if this is information that was <clears throat> given to him when he inquired rather than his actual observation. Uh, it's just a question, you know, nothing against Mike, but how, you know, is it 40 miles an hour or 80? Because that's double. Um, there was another guy at the table, his name was Marty, and he said that there were no winds the day before. Laura said that only the very tops of the trees swayed with winds, but not very much. Uh, she also shared a text message, a text message of the red flag warning from PG&E two days before, like I mentioned. And she also shared a, a snippet from Channel 10 News. Uh, the reporter was Anthony Michael Adams, and he was reporting on the fire as well. Um, I need to dig up that video. If anyone knows how to find it or where to find it, let me know. I'm going to look for it as well. Now, Mike and the others at the table said that no one is allowed into paradise because they're trying to keep looters out. That there have been reports of looting, and apparently there's video out there of a woman uh, looting into someone's home and was confronted. 
Uh, also, they said people that have RVs, they can park on their property. However, they have to have a clean permit authorized by the powers that be before they can do it. And once they do it, it's only valid for 180 days. And after that period, they have to must obtain another permit. I find that very interesting that you can't go back to your own property. Um, it just sounds very suspect in police state if you can't park an RV on top of your own property. Um, but that's what's going on, and I found a news article. Uh, I posted it on my Facebook page, and I'll put a link to my Facebook page later if you want to check it out, some of the things that I'm putting about this. Um, so, uh, let's see, I found out that Paradise was going to open up to the residents on Sunday, December 16th, but there's going to be a curfew instituted from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. So people are going to be able to come in and out, go to their homes and whatnot. But, uh, <clears throat> again, I was only able to go up Pence Road. Every time I try to make a left to get into Paradise, it was blocked by a police car with the lights on and a police officer standing outside. Tons of PG&E workers. As I kind of walk through some of the locations of where the houses were burnt and then driving by, um, there's a lot going on up there, but I was very curious to see what was going on inside Paradise. I hope to take another trip back up to see how relief efforts are going and to actually get in Paradise and see what's going on. I just fear that a lot of the original things that were there, evidence has been scrubbed. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. <clears throat> Forgive me, it's my first video. You know, I'm an emerging awakening truther and I need to do something because these are people in my backyard. I live about three hours away and no matter where you are in the world, we're all linked in this together and uh, we need to do something to support each other. So here's a step of mine. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.